dear facebook pure urology viewers we are really honored to have our special speaker here today dr abdul latif al turki from kuwait he is going to talk on the tips and tricks of rirs let me have the pleasure of introducing sir Okay, Dr. Abdul Latif Sir is the head of accreditation committee, Kuwait Institute of Medical Specialization, KIMS. He is the founding member, Kuwait Surgical Association, and co-founder, Sidra Urology Clinic, Kuwait City. He is the exam committee member, Kuwait Institute of Medical Specialization, Urology Residency Program, Kuwait. He has advocated minimally invasive surgery and endourology in Kuwait. and performed the early cases he has published many research studies articles and public commentaries in several world renowned journals he has been an invited speaker in several local regional and international meetings and events he is currently a certified teacher and instructor and carrying out workshops locally regionally and internationally so over to dr Lab abdul latif sir thank you sharing my screen I'll put it full screen Okay um Good afternoon everybody. Um thank you for the introduction. Thank you for the kind invitation and thank you for a uh, pretty uh, uh hospital. I hope uh, uh, uh Dr. Mohan is in good health and him and his family. Uh I come to you from uh, Kuwait um, and uh, we have a lot of things in common with you guys. Uh, one of them is stones. Uh Uh, I have no conflict of interest uh, uh, and not affiliated with any company. Uh, Kuwait is a is a is in Western Asia, the top of the Arabian Gulf, neighboring Saudi Arabia and Iraq. It's a 4.2 uh, uh, million population. People experience extreme heat here, especially during summertime. And during June, the temperature reaches up to 45 degrees. However, it actually goes beyond that. And we recorded this year. uh the hottest uh, spot in the world um the incidence of of stone disease is um 23.9 uh, nearly 24 per 100,000 population for the adult population where in children pediatric population is much less than that is 6.9 the new stone formation is higher in males compared to females and the calcium oxalate uh, and the calcium composition becomes one of the highest uh, found the incidence of hospital uh, admission for non uh, recurrent stone is about 43% in 100,000 population um 43 uh, uh, nearly 44 mostly the uh, men are uh, the ones who uh, take the brunt of that uteroscopy is the most common intervention uh, in elective and uh, in emergency uh uh setting so in order to start talking about stone uh, management and tackling stones several methods uh, have been uh, introduced and they've been evolving over the years uh, ESWL been one of the earlier ones with uh, uh RARS and PCNL and the highest share of the advancement we've seen in the past uh, uh uh recent years was in the IR RIRS uh it's a high evolving technique not suited for all uh renal stones however the indications uh keep uh, uh, uh growing with uh, an an investment in, in in instruments and also in techniques 
it is important, extremely important for, to get an optimal outcome, uh, to select your patients and equipments, and also to invest on your expertise to get the best uh, of outcomes. It, it's been reported first by uh, Marshall um, and then uh, the flexible the flexible scope tip has decreased in size with a, a standardized channel and the digital uh, 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 scope was introduced in 2006. In 2014, uh, the first uh, new robotic platform for flexible was reported and there's more to come. In general, this is a, 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 the features that all flexible scope have uh, base components, including the fiber optic bundle, uh, providing the image and the light source, and the working and irrigation channel uh, with a deflection mechanism, which is becoming a standard uh, of care. The sheath dimension of the flexible uh, uh, is also uh, varies, and the sizes actually um, are coming um, uh, uh, down. Now we actually, uh, it's not unusual to ask for a, a seven. 0.5 uh, millimeter uh, 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 scope with uh, a, work, a good size working channel and uh, a smaller tip. What are the factors influencing our decision to uh, uh, for IRS? I actually put the the technical factors. However, there are the factors uh, um, after taking the patient consideration and also the stain related factors. Uh, there are uh, the cost, uh, the expertise, and the facility uh, you have. Uh, and these are, will come into account. However, the main two parts are the patient. Uh, we have to make sure that the, the general health of the patient uh, can take this procedure and also uh, being at the general regional anesthesia fitness for this uh, 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 for this uh, surgery, the anatomy of the patient, and also uh, being the musculoskeletal anatomy or uh, the, the renal anatomy. And it's extremely important to counsel our patients. It's very important to tell them uh, from somebody who actually has uh, no pain or uh, no problems or stone, which uh, is growing but asymptomatic that uh, you have to um, it's like a contract between you and your patient so it's a, extremely important that you tell them that you might need to stent only if it's inaccessible or there's evidence of infection and they might be more than one attempt and this actually comes with expertise with instruments and uh, uh, obviously with the size of the stone so it might be a, you might have a, a second attempt. Uh, all complications, including infection, bleeding, and uh, uh, should be discussed uh, it's full. And also, if you're placing a, a stent, that uh, they will have stent symptoms, irrespective of the medication you give them to relieve that. They will have stent symptoms. Other alternatives to uh, RARS should be discussed, uh, and namely. Uh, PCNL and more specifically a uh, mini PCNL, which has uh, uh, some its equivalent and sometimes superior to uh, to uh, uh, RARS. However, uh, it has to be an head of expertise, and also you have to give this option to the patient. What about uh, uh, when we take the stones? Uh, uh, in consideration, the size doesn't matter because the bigger the size, the the less chance you can clear this uh, in in one session, and also the location. Um, uh, being in, in, for instance, in a in a tight or a difficult lower calyx, this actually will uh, might make uh, the procedure more difficult, and the density of the stone, uh, the harder the stone, the Less a chance of of uh, 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 clearing it completely in one session. However, uh, there are several techniques and several ways of dealing with this. 
the guidelines uh, uh, have not changed uh, tremendously. Uh, any stone over two centimeter, uh, the first choice is PCNL, RAS is there. And also the debate between one and two centimeter, uh, RAS become more severe compared to SWL. And uh, there's always uh, uh, a debate between um, uh, PCNL group and uh, the RARS group, uh, but I think for two centimeter and below, uh, uh, you can tackle them both depending on your expertise, your equipment, and your uh, 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 and the patient. Of course, uh, they have to be uh, they have to understand that uh, a stone free rate in PCNL is superior to uh, RARS. However, uh, uh, some will and when you discuss the procedure in detail some uh, people will uh, be wary of the uh, uh, morbidities the morbidity of pcnl uh, which actually uh, becoming less and less especially with advocation of uh, all the uh, miniaturized pcnl techniques the lower pole uh, stones uh, this poses uh, an, another challenge uh, especially with RARS, uh, that the clearance is not uh, 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 is optimal. And also reaching that stone is not always uh, easy. So they, they developed uh, their own uh, criteria. However, um, it's lately, this is not a, a huge problem for RARS. We rarely find a problem getting to these stones. So, one thing is very important to uh, when you uh, the patient is is ready for this procedure. Uh, there are several ways uh, 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 of entry, uh, and you have to prepare for that in order to introduce uh, uh, the the scope and uh, to tackle the stone successfully. Uh, Several uh, patients will come uh, post-emergency stenting, especially if they infected or uh, they have uh, uh, severe pain or they came being stented, uh, will improve uh, uh, the connection. Sorry, I'm talking about my connection will improve uh, uh, access. So you, the, there's, there will be ease to introduce uh, access sheath or the scope with no problem. If not, as we call it, the version ureter, it sometimes this poses uh, uh, a challenge. Uh, it's important when you initially put the cystoscope in, I think it's very important to assess uh, the ureteric orifice, uh, being it uh, blocked or uh, severely narrow or completely obstructed. It's very important to engage that initially, and we can do that, uh, we probe it with a guide wire and see what the response with that. It, it is uh, 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 advisable or uh, an option to uh, put the semi-rigid ureteroscope uh, together with doing a retrograde. This actually will give you a nice map to map up the ureter so you can plan your procedure accordingly. And also, as we will come uh, uh, later in the talk, that you customize uh, the procedure per patient. It's not a standard that everybody should get an access. It should be, everybody should uh, have the scope up. Not always this is the case, especially in, we find this in, in, in fine thin people that the ureter is actually narrower than uh, 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 in, in times that we need to take care uh, of this. But when you do the semi-rigid ureteroscope and a uh, virgin ureter, you can actually calibrate uh, and see uh, and also passively dilate this so you won't have uh, a problem accessing the ureter initially from the meatus going all the way up to uh, the kidney. The access sheet needed or not, there are several factors which come and we'll discuss some of them as we come along. The introduction uh, of the access sheet, this is another uh, uh, technique uh, with several uh, modifications or, or, or uh, tricks 
that actually to improve uh, and ensure safety of this uh, access sheath uh, introduction. So when we uh, put the semi-rigid um, uh, ureteroscope, uh, we will, we will uh, apply a passive dilatation. It is important to negotiate difficult ureters. So because sometimes if, if you have a kink or you have a, 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 a difficult ureter, your uh, scope, uh, your access sheath, your scope, all will buckle. And also you, you'll have, especially if you're applying a bit of force, there's a big chance you can perforate as well. The calibration of the, of the ureter, it's a very important um, uh, technique that actually will allow you to engage, to say whether I can, um, uh, I, I can apply or uh, push an axis sheath or not, or I can just put the um, ureteroscope up, flexible. So, and also, um, uh, when doing the semi-rigid ureteroscope, you can deal with ureteric stones uh, along the way. So these will not cause uh, any problems, especially when you um, are pushing an axis sheath that might actually divert and actually cause an injury in the wall. So uh, looking at this, this is the passive dilatation. This is uh, just beyond the uh, pelvic brim and actually starting coming up to the, to the uh, this is in a female uh, coming up uh, uh, to uh, uh, the upper ureter and this actually stopped. There was some resistance, so this, this was pulled back and uh, axis sheath was not uh, engaged. Uh, just the flexible ureteroscope went up. And also when we have a difficult uh, ureter, you, initially the wire will go in. However, if this kink is um, uh, pushed against, you will easily perforate the ureter. So it, semi rigid actually is very useful instrument to um, straighten the ureter and then uh, to push the axis sheath or uh, uh, ureteroscope over a guide wire. What about the axis sheath? This is a, a, a very important um, uh, discovery, uh, first described 74. Initially had a poor, uh, 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 it was not popular because of uh, the number of ureteric injuries uh, to the, due to the partially blind nature of the insertion and also the thin wall of the ureter uh, uh, had no opposition when, when, when it's pushed against uh, over, even over guide wire. Uh, uh, and now it's actually one of the most important tools uh, we use. Uh, it has several uh, features that actually uh, 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 make it popular and helpful uh, in our technique. Uh, they will have a, a nice uh, 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 kink-resistant sheath, and it's uh, hydrophilic, and it has a marker which you can see on fluoroscopy, and the uh, uh, click or hub design, uh, and uh, it, you can actually even use uh, the inner sheath to uh, dilate before you put this uh, in. So, uh, sorry. The standard of care was uh, 12, 14 French, uh, um, utilized for adults. And lately we've been using a smaller uh, uh, axis sheet, especially with the advent of the smaller scopes. Uh, typically it's 35 centimeter used in female and 45 centimeter in males to uh, bypass, uh, 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 bypass the prostate. However, in our practice, we majority of time we use 35 centimeter uh, uh, if needed, and uh, this works very well in both male and female. So you can see the level of uh, uh, axis sheath on the uh, picture on the left, uh, and the operator going up. We stop just below the UPJ, and this actually allows us. Uh, uh, a good access uh, in and out with no problem, no buckling of the scope, and uh, uh, even uh, to extract stones, to uh, go back and forth, to flush. This is a very good uh, 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 location. And also uh, uh, it's important 
that you don't go beyond the UPJ because um, theoretically this can cause a uh, stricture of the uh, here to pelvic junction. So what are the uh, advantages and what does it do? Uh, it's an atraumatic entry and re-entry to the collective system. It will not allow the scope to buckle in the bladder, especially when you oppose against the wall of the meatus, ureteric uh, uh, orifice, sorry. Uh, and then it, it does reduce operative time and cost. Uh, however, it adds a bit of a cost as well uh, 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 with this introduction. It protects the upper tract from increased uh, pressure. And this was associated with uh, a larger sheath. However, the smaller sheaths are now and there is some debate whether this is the case. Uh, also, it protects your scope, uh, especially reusable scopes. The risk of infection and sepsis uh, has been reduced. However, this being open for debate, improved visualization because you can actually use it to uh, have uh, uh, circulation of fluid. And, uh, this will uh, improve that, especially when you do uh, lithotripsy. And you can retrieve stones using baskets uh, in and out, uh, especially if you want them for sampling or you uh, just want to get the stones out. The big question, do we need the access sheet? Um, uh, uh, it's, it's important to, um, when you customize your treatment per patient, it's very important to um, study. Each patient uh, uh, has a different anatomy. Each patient has a different ureter. Each patient has a different intervention. So it's very important to, um, to study uh, each patient before you, you engage. And it's not a standard of care uh, uh, to put uh, ureter access sheets to everybody. So uh, the semi-rigid ureteroscope prior to RNRS will help us to select the right uh, size uh, 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 access sheet. And, and then because you'll have different sizes and it's different when you have um, a, a pre-stented uh, patient to somebody who was not stented with a narrow ureter. So this will make a difference if you, uh, and if you have that range in your, uh, in your uh, uh, you have it in your OR, that's actually very good. So you can actually select per patient what uh, instruments to use and how to improve an outcome. Whether this uh, the access sheet introduction improves the stone free rate, it's been debated and, and it's not uh, a major uh, uh, contributor to the stone free uh, rate. As we said, the decision to place it should be tailored uh, on a case dependent basis rather than actually standardized for everybody. It can uh, reduce the intrarenal pressure. Um, these are, it's not just the, the, the access sheet by itself, actually the, the mode or the way you uh, use your fluids. Uh, how do you, um, is it a hand, is it a pump uh, or is it by gravity? This is, Several factors get into this, and all, obviously with your tracks, the bigger it is, the less pressure will be. The size does not does matter, uh, and uh, now you can use smaller uh, uh, access sheet with smaller scopes. This has uh, has complications, and it's been um, introduced by Traxer uh, uh, four or five years ago uh, with. Uh, its classification. There are intraoperative, uh, the bleeding, the perforation, the, uh, and uh, God forbid, the avulsion. And you can get immediate and long-term uh, stricture with obstruction because this was um, correlated with the duration of ureteral axis sheath uh, uh, presence. Um, it's, it's important to, when you have a, uh, 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 when you introduce a ureter access sheet to advocate uh, uh, standing. Uh, it's very important to, uh, although you will not 
uh, even if you come out and the direct vision, you will not see immediate uh, 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 terror or uh, even uh, 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 mucosal uh, uh, problems. However, there will be uh, some immediate, or some long-term effect, and this is actually prevented by placement of a stent for a temporary uh, period of time. So what do you consider when you uh, planning to introduce the access sheet? Uh, obviously the size, there's different techniques to, um, uh, to, uh, to introduce the access sheet. Uh, the classical technique uh, over uh, uh, the guide wire on the fluoroscopy, and obviously with no, um, with no force, this should uh, slide um, gradually. Uh, and obviously with pre-stented, uh, 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 this is optimal. Uh, uh, however, if they're not uh, stented, uh, this might be a bit of a difficulty. There's a, a, another technique, um, uh, uh, the uh, semi-rigid ureteroscope, uh, until orifice, and then actually you introduce uh, uh, the, the ureter axis sheet. And another technique we describe, and uh, uh, it's been done uh, some other places, that over flexible uh, ureter scope. So um, these are the different sizes. Uh, I mean, uh, there was uh, 12, 13, uh, uh, and then uh, this. The coloplast, the last one, the orange, is the uh, 10, 12, which is actually standard of care for us as far as size. And we can see in the background as well, the flexible um, uh, ureteroscope, ureteroscope uh, of 7.5 7 French uh, in diameter. The axis sheet uh, uh, introduction, the classical way, obviously there's a guide wire, which uh, it comes through the uh, uh, the end, the tip of uh, the introducer, or on the side, so you can have a guide wire uh, left in the system uh, uh, as a safety and with the sheet beside the sheet. The over flexible scope, we actually remove the introducer and actually place it inside the scope, take it all the way up to the hub, and then. Uh, introduce the scope of a guide wire. And uh, after that, uh, once we are in the kidney, we can introduce uh, uh, the flexible, uh, sorry. Okay. sorry. Yeah, you're back again, sir. Sorry. Your, your video is not playing and your audio got interrupted. Okay. Yeah, yes. You're audible now, sir. You can continue. So uh, we introduce the axis sheath uh, over uh, the scope. And then once the scope is in over guide wire, we can actually introduce over the scope under direct vision, uh, uh, the axis sheath. And this is actually provides extra safety. Uh, and this is shown in this uh, picture. And then we'll show you in this uh, video. So you can see uh, we have the 7.5 French uh, uh, flexible ureteroscope. We remove the introducer of the obturator. We introduce the scope inside it all the way up to um, the base of the scope. And then uh, over a guide wire going and fluoroscopy and the direct vision. So we have two uh, ways of checking. Uh, uh, we introduce it and then, and you'll see this in this other video. So the scope is in uh, all the way up to the kidney. Uh, and the, you can see the guide wire. Uh, yeah. And then we introduce the axis sheath over 
while we're watching uh, under direct vision and also uh, under fluoroscopy. This should be done uh, with no force, uh, just it should slide over the scope. So the, once you're in, uh, being it um, with an access sheet or without, then uh, uh, you inspect the, the kidney and you prepare your, um, uh, and you find your target, obviously uh, the stone or the stones, and then you prepare for uh, uh, lithotripsy. Uh, holmium laser lithotripsy, uh, it's been a standard uh, of care. Uh, the, we've been uh, lucky with this because the zonal, uh, 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 sorry, the thermal energy associated with this is uh, 0.5 to 1 millimeter, which gives it a, a great advantage and safety. Um, hence this uh, uh, with, especially in the kidney, uh, the 200 fiber or 273, depending on, on the make of uh, the laser, became the standard of care and also allows the, the, the scope to be deflected and also to reach different uh, areas without affecting the deflection of the scope. Thulium, um, uh, 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 it's been introduced lately and it's actually proved itself to be safe and fast and not being affected by the stone density. The stone free rate uh, compared to the high power uh, lasers is actually equivalent, if not higher, uh, with minor complications, uh, mostly clavium one or two. Uh, and uh, 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 we have to uh, thank uh, Dr. Mohan and his uh, uh, and uh, uh, his group for the pub publication of uh, a large one of the largest series. Uh, uh, in the world uh, 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 lately for uh, this, uh, uh, the report of their uh, technique and their results. And this actually opens up uh, uh, quite a lot for, uh, for uh, more data to come in and to adapt this as an as a, as a, uh, important contender to homium laser. So the advantages when you uh, use the laser, it's all stone types uh, and the smaller fragments uh, 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 as compared to uh, other uh, lithotripsis, it's much smaller than other things. Uh, and then especially with the new uh, uh, Moses uh, 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 lasers, uh, that the red propulsion is actually much less uh, even less than what it was compared to other uh, uh, techniques. There's several, uh, using the homium, there's several uh, modes uh, depending on your laser machine. And this is another uh, debate or another uh, issue. Uh, not everybody has a high power laser uh, with uh, a single use fibers. Uh, there's several places where they have a low uh, energy uh, laser uh, with uh, uh, multi-use fibers, and they are as good as, uh, however, but the the uh, the bigger lasers uh, or more energy lasers, they provide more variety on uh, tackling stones and different kind of stones, um, and obviously. Uh, this will speed up um, the process compared to a, a low power uh, 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 lasers. So the dusting uh, 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 can be done for large and hard stones. Uh, the technique we use is we initially start with the outer, but then we focus on the hard core. Uh, uh, these are very difficult to deal with, uh, especially when they become uh, um, very hard uh, when they become small pieces. So they have to go and chase them and very difficult to uh, break. It's easier always to uh, break the stone in when it's large, the larger the better, because you can go uh, and uh, uh, dust it completely. Uh, 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 but when it's so many uh, pieces around, 
it, it sometimes is difficult to finish this uh, in good time. The fragmentation we use, lately we've been using less and less fragmentation. Um, we use this in our, uh, if we need it in the PCNL, uh, so we can extract the large fragments. But the main two modes we've been using is the dusting and popcorn when they have uh, finishing the multiple fragments. And also there's a, a new, um, um, there's a technique we use as well. When it's difficult, uh, a, a difficult lower calyx stones, we use um, uh, the popcorn uh, mode uh, with no contact mode uh, in the fiber, which I'm gonna show you. So the setup for um, lithotripsy when you uh, are ready, it's one trolley, you can keep these on. Uh, uh, this actually will make things, uh, will make uh, your uh, nurses will love you for this. This is a quick uh, preparation, very simple, and you can keep it on the side. So uh, it will allow you, once you put your access sheet in, to be in and out uh, uh, on the same trolley. We can, we use uh, sometimes uh, manual irrigation to irrigate, and this is, uh, we use the, the tubing from our anesthesia uh, and uh, a 50 cc syringe, uh, which can be done intermittently to uh, uh, improve vision, especially if you have access sheet and you have the drainage uh, coming through. So this is uh, a low, uh, uh, this is a, a low power uh, laser. We're using uh, 0.4, uh, Joule with uh, 15 hertz, and you can see this is just under a thousand uh, uh, Hansfield unit. And we start uh, slowly. And uh, what we do, this is just a, a, a modified, uh, just actually a brief uh, video. But you can see when we uh, go on the shell, shell is easy to break. We focus more on the core and you can see the core is very hard and then we can finish off when you have uh, 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 access teeth uh, to remove these hard fragments which sometimes uh, uh, are difficult and should not be left behind. In, in Moses uh, which is uh, a luminous uh, 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 trademark and there is actually a, a mode where you have a distance mode or uh, a non-contact mode. This is uh, very nice. And we actually, we have several uh, techniques we use this for, especially when you have a difficult um, uh, access uh, to uh, especially lower uh, pole or lower calyx. Uh, we can use this technique with uh, a popcorn effect and this will actually attract the stones from a distance. You can break them and you can clear the stones. And I'll show you in this. Uh, see, uh, this is a, a lower pole and then uh, we uh, 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 supinating and actually using our hand also to rotate the scope, then start with uh, uh, dusting this uh, first because you get to it and sometimes even dusting or, or for uh, fragmentation or the popcorn, you don't need to touch uh, the stone. This actually has several advantages on this, uh, uh, that uh, difficult angle. See, this is a, uh, it's not a hard stone, it's like broke. And then uh, this will allow you to give you access to difficult areas uh, without uh, touching and keeping your distance, uh, you can apply your popcorn uh, effect uh, and this actually will, uh, will do the job beautifully. And uh, this will uh, protect your uh, fiber also, um, uh, especially the single use when you have, you lose that tip, especially in, in uh, Moses, uh, this actually uh, will reduce the efficacy. So several advantages on this. When we have large and hard stones, um, uh, as I said, we uh, initially go with an outer, then once we 
locate the core. We go for the core, uh, which is the hardest part of the stone. Uh, and if it's large and sitting and waiting for you to um, continue with that, uh, this will actually uh, 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 will allow you to disintegrate the stone and then have it out uh, or dust it completely because the, that's the challenging part of the stone. And I think we have to, um, when we customize what we do per stone, uh, each stone is a bit different, uh, but I think we have to modify our modes and the way we go uh, and tackle each stone. So once we're done with the lithotripsy, now we have to plan our eggs. Uh, once we clear the stone free, we, we can actually, the technique we do when we have an access sheet, we can flush by a ureteric catheter and pulling out, uh, simulating uh, uh, the uh, PCNL or mini PCNL, uh, creating a negative pressure, which actually have some of the fragments or some of the clots out. And also, um, uh, this actually will uh, uh, flush even any debris if you need to go back in to have a look again. At the, our exit also, we pull the access sheet to the scope edge, and also we come out under direct vision to inspect the ureter, make sure there's um, uh, there's no injuries of the uh, of the mucosa, and we can uh, all the stones left behind. We can actually even reintroduce if the stone seen along the ureter, and we can tackle that. If you, um, uh, and I think this is something which comes up very often, but in our experience, if you, um, if you have an access sheet, please stand the patients, even for a week, and then you can remove it under local. But I think this, this is very important because you, you don't want uh, even transient uh, uh, obstruction or pain or uh, an injury which you have not seen immediately. So we advocate that uh, quite frequently and we tell our patients. So flushing through access teeth, it's very uh, easy with the ureteric catheter going into the access teeth and uh, syringe. And you can actually uh, uh, flush and, uh, 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 and actually withdraw. So we just put it through. Uh, this is just a demonstration a video. And then uh, you can uh, push fluids in and you can actually uh, push and pull the ureteric out. And then you, you, you simulate the negative pressure you, you do with your scope during the mini PCNL over the sheath. And you can see this will actually withdraw, withdraws uh, some of the debris, some of the stones, and also some of the blood clots, if there are any. So this is our exit. Uh, uh, also, this is what we do with the patient. So basically, we uh, we push uh, fluids in, and you can see the return and. Another way of doing it, we push fluids and also we come out uh, with the ureteric and this will actually get some small stones and some debris. Now our access sheet out, uh, uh, we can do this under direct vision. So we just withdraw, um, withdraw the access sheet all the way to, uh, uh, to the base of the scope. And we can actually support it uh, as we're coming out. Uh, and then you come out under direct vision with the access sheath attached to your scope. Uh, and this actually ensures that you're not missing anything, uh, stone or uh, uh, an injury um, or anything else. We can show this uh, on a patient. So basically, we pull it all the way back. We we do this under direct vision. We can see clearly as we're coming back, obviously it's not as clear as the monitor we're seeing at the time. Then as we come back, we see uh, uh, a small uh, uh, 
stone uh, that we had to deal with. Uh, uh, without doing that, we would have missed it. You can see the stone uh, and the lumen of the ureter, which escaped from it. What other uses? Uh, we actually, uh, urology is not enough, so we uh, moved up. <laughs> and we've been uh, using the flexible ureteroscopes and the biliary tree with our colleagues from hepatobiliary uh, surgery. Uh, we've been using them in common bile duct, uh, hepatic duct, and we can show you a quick uh, video. And uh, this is using uh, uh, fragmentation mode and uh, in a, a left hepatic duct, uh, breaking stones. Uh, and you can see they have a different consistency. Uh, uh, and this actually uh, helped several patients. Uh, we've got different series with them. Uh, it's not just using the flexible, we, we use semi-rigid. Uh, they have ruin wise uh, and we put access sheet through them as well, uh, short and long. And this actually saved patients from going uh, into partial hepatectomy for a recurrent cholangitis and because of the suction. And they have no access on that. And we've been helping them with that. Uh, and this is uh, myself with uh, uh, one of my colleagues putting the access seat through a, a laparoscopic port into the um, and Y and then moving into. Uh, 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 moving into uh, the biliary tree. Sorry. So, um, in conclusion, uh, the RIRS uh, is evolving further with improvements, scopes, and accessories. Uh, Ureteral access sheath is very important accessory to us, but it should not be standardized for everybody. Uh, I think we should customize our treatment per patient, per stone, per ureter. Homium user is the standard of care. However, thulium is a worthy contender, especially for larger and harder stones. Our techniques should be uh, revised and critique in order to improve our uh, efficacy and patient safety. Thank you so much. So thank you, sir, for the wonderful elaborate presentation. And it was really amazing to see the use of flexible erythroscopy in the biliary system. That was really good. So we have a few questions from our side. Shall we start the discussion, sir? Please. So what is your upper limit of the stone size? which you choose for RARS. So what is the size criteria or the cutoff? And what special tips and tricks do you take to manage those large volume stones? Uh, thank you for the question. I think the, the envelope is being pushed for the size. Uh, for us, um, um, our institution, anything above two, we, uh, we offer um, mini PCNL for which is standard of care for us. Uh, two and below, we advise our patients with other options, uh, apart from mini PCL, which is the RIRS. In order, in order to optimize uh, uh, this, uh, is used and, uh, we have high power lasers and we use the, uh, uh, the smaller scopes. Uh, in, in, Lately as well, we've been offering this for people with uh, anomalies like uh, uh, partial kidney uh, or malrotated kidneys uh, or even pelvic, uh, pelvic uh, kidneys. Uh, we do have that option. Uh, we have a very skilled staff uh, and uh, we have the amenities, but we tell our patients, we want you off the table uh, as soon as possible. So uh, if we feel that this is going to be a prolonged procedure. Uh, we we go for the uh, 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 procedure, and also one thing we've noticed as well uh, with the high density, the high density stones, we we prefer going for the uh, mini PCL uh, because actually this is a quicker 
uh, procedure and also finishes this much quicker with less complications. So, sir, how often do you use access sheet? Do you use access sheet in all the patients yeah. or do you do sheetless RIRS also? We, uh, excellent question. We do sheetless RIRS, especially people who are pre-stented uh, or uh, smaller stones, less density stones, and also narrow ureters. So we have uh, uh, sometimes we calibrate and we actually uh, uh, measure up whether we can use uh, access seat. If we, it's difficult or uh, the semi-rigid ureteroscope does not proceed easily, we just put uh, the guide wire and the flexible up. If even that is difficult, we just put a stent and come back again. Hello? Hello, sir. Yes, I can hear. So, up to what size are you comfortable in doing sheetless RARS, sir? Up to 2 cm. Up to 2 cm? With a high power laser. Okay. So, in that case, do you plan to restrict the duration? Like, if it crosses certain duration, then you plan, plan for a stage procedure? Or you can't? Have, yeah. Because we have a teaching program, uh, also with the residents, uh, we, it's nice to have standards. Uh, we don't like to exceed an hour, uh, especially if it's sheetless, especially if it's a hard stone or large stone. Uh, an hour is our cutoff time. But sometimes you proceed further if it's difficult or multiple. Uh, uh, but usually it's an hour uh, because of the uh, uh, when you go beyond that, uh, there might be some uh, problems with uh, uh, reflux and also uh, infection. Okay. So how often do you do pre-stenting, sir? What is the percentage of cases that you do pre-stenting in your practice sure. majority of our uh, pre-stented patients are come through emergency and usually they are very symptomatic we have our uh, uh, we have a, a renal colic score which we developed in our uh, institution and uh, this actually gives us an indication who should be stented or not based on four criteria which is the white blood cells uh, and creatinine level uh, the size of the stone and the location of the stone um, not going to uh, dwell on that, but majority of our patients are, who are pre-stented, they come through emergency. Electively, we do not stent uh, unless uh, we find uh, a severe narrowing or evidence of infection uh, when they come to be treated electively. So, inferior medial calicial stones, do you have any specific tip and trick to how to approach the stone? Do you use any uh, disposable scope in that case, or what is your tip and trick regarding that case? Majority of our scopes now, uh, we have actually non-disposable and disposable, uh, but majority of our uh, scopes are disposable now, and actually we use a smaller size. This actually gives us a, an advantage. We can displace, if possible, with a basket uh, to a, a middle or upper calyx or in pelvis uh, in that, and then we can actually tackle it. Another way, as I showed you, there is a, a, a if you can actually just see it without being able to reach it, you can use this uh, uh, no contact mode uh, and you can actually do a popcorn effect and you'll be surprised. The result is amazing. When you do that, even if it's does, you, you reach, you just barely reach to it, and then you can actually displace it and then you can have more access to it. If the stone is completely stuck inside that calyx and there is no space between the infundibulum and the stone, especially inferior medial calicial stone, so uh, do you still attempt RIRS or do you go ahead with PCNL? And do you take preoperatively consent for PCNL also in cases where you anticipate difficulty with RIRS? Now, I think this is a very important teaching uh, point. Any patient we feel uh, there will be difficulty or, um, as you said, an unfavorable uh, uh, anatomy or a difficult stone, uh, 
we do take the consent for both uh, and we prepare them for both. Uh, 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 if, if we feel that on CT or uh, the anatomy of the patient is not uh, uh, accessible easily uh, for our ARS, we actually plan it from point go to uh, do a mini PCNL. And we usually we do our mini PCNLs uh, mostly from uh, Any other questions? So, so for, for final take home message, do you think disposable scopes will be the future? It's very uh, a very good question as well. And uh, um, I think for teaching for us, it's, it's a very important tool. Uh, our residents, uh, uh, the, because they ruin our <laughs> non-disposable uh, scopes. Uh, but the, the vision is excellent. It's improving. We're getting um, uh, smaller scopes and uh, the access is excellent with them. Uh, but I think it, as we come along, they will become uh, much more cheaper and, and actually mobile. You know, you can do them in a, a you don't have to have all the gadgets uh, or the expense of uh, 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 the non-disposable with their digital and what have you. This is a, a single monitor with uh, with a, with a, a as good uh, scope as any uh, digital scope. Uh, but the cost comes to um, um, this is something we didn't talk about, uh, and uh, this is something we would like to talk about. Usually, the cost will increase initially, but I think the cost of repair and all this uh, can be. Uh, overwhelming if you have scopes and you have a busy practice and you don't want to stop. Uh, some places we are prohibited to um, uh, re-sterilize our scopes, uh, but some places do re-sterilize uh, the disposable scopes. And now the companies uh, figured this out. So what they do, they have a time limit on the scopes as well. So in the past, we didn't have time limits on these. So. I think they're coming. Uh, we hope they become cheaper and, and smaller. Uh, uh, but uh, for us, it's an excellent uh, tool and we've been using it and we're very happy with it. Okay. Thank you so much, sir, for all thank your you. answers and thank you for the nice session. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank you. Pass my guests to uh, uh, Dr. Chandra. Sure, sir. Sure. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you. Thank you, sir.